what we're going to do next is we're going to talk about the fact that once you get in touch with this dream, you know what you're going to do? You're going to do what everybody does. You are going to start arguing against it. You're going to start making jokes. You're going to start making excuses. You're going to start getting afraid. Because once this dream keeps showing up on that piece of paper every morning, once you start to feel the pull of your heart, once you start to notice, as I have for the last eight years, that everybody and their mother has a podcast except for me, you're going to start to feel the pain of not working toward it. And instead of turning toward our dream, you know what we all do? We do what you're going to hear Barbara doing back in L.A. You're going to hear her kicking up a dust storm of excuses, of jokes, of reasons, of this. But here's the difference. She had Mel Robbins on her ass that day. And I was not going to have any of it. Because your dreams are not a joke. Your dreams are serious business that demand and deserve your attention. What if you lived in South Florida and you were comfortable and you were big? And I was big? Big. Like big, big, big. Well, I tried that. Okay. Um, I actually am like a big fish in like the Jewish community. <laughs> yeah, but, but so hold on a second. Yeah. Stop making a joke of okay, this. Okay, I'm sorry. You're right. you're no, right. I'm serious. Yeah. Because this is how you block yes, honesty. Yep. Yeah, I'm funny. So you're, you are funny. No. But being unhappy is not funny. No, it's really, really, really not. Especially and, when you have a sister who's like so good at being happy. Yeah, but stop <laughs> making jokes. Sorry, so hard not to. You're so amazing. I uh, no, entertain you. No, I don't want you to entertain me. I, I want you to be honest with me. Okay. Hi. So what do you want? Do you want to move back to L.A. and give it another try? Yes, and I almost did. And then I was like, politics and... Oh, crime, and I'm scared. So, so this, what you're witnessing here yeah. is you're, yeah, you're, you're witnessing somebody who is literally trying to extinguish yes. her own flame with jokes. Yeah. And you are not having this moment of reckoning with yourself. Yeah. I am telling you yeah. that what you're witnessing, we all do this shit. You maybe do it through excuses or heaviness in terms of your emotions or the pity party or the, like for me, always kind of scanning for what's wrong and if I don't see it out there, I find it in here. Your form of this is jokes. It's how you get attention, it's how you get love and it has so overtaken you yeah. that you're not even honest with yourself about what you want. And the second you get honest with yourself, like this is no joke, like at the, at the end of this, you die. Yeah. And so you can absolutely be a happy person. You can be big. You can be big in South Florida or in LA, but you're not going to do it by making a joke about everything. And it begins with you being serious with yourself. Like you don't have to share it here, but what you write in that journal, better be honest. Yeah. Because it can't be funny. Like your dreams are not funny. Your dreams are serious business. And you have within you the ability to literally write it down and say, by God, I'm going to do whatever it takes yeah. until this happens. Because here's what would be way worse, everybody. What would be way worse is that you spent the next 40, 50 years wishing you had done it. Yeah. <clears throat> do you hear everybody there? Hmm. I want to talk to you because I'm serious about this. You have to be honest with yourself. I do not want you to spend another day wishing you had done it. You know, I'm sitting here right now with everybody that is on our team as we're recording this podcast and I'm looking at everybody and, you know, I'm, I'm thinking, my God. You know, I, 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 I look at Cameron and I'm like, she almost went to law school. And she felt this flame inside her going, mm, ah, go in a different direction. She didn't know what to do next. She just knew that something else was meant for her. Thank God she didn't go to law school. Thank God she 
turn toward that pole. Thank God she fanned the flame because here's the one tool you need. This is the only tool you need in order to align with your dreams. Every single day when you wake up, you're going to do those little, you're going to write down the five dreams. That's a way to get, get your desires flowing again. That's a way to teach yourself how to start dreaming with the lid off. That's a way for you to really start to get yourself in touch with what your mind, body, and spirit are trying to wake you up to and have you pay attention to, the things in your life that make you come alive, that make you grow. You're supposed to walk toward that light. You're not supposed to argue against it. And so every single day, you're going to be working on, okay, I got to let myself desire things. I got to give myself permission to want things. Like I'm allowed to do that. Not only am I allowed to do that, I actually need to. It's part of my life force. And I'm not saying you're just going to sit around and wish for shit to happen. You're going to have to work for it. That's how you get it in life, but you won't get where you're meant to go if you can't even claim what's meant for you. And it is a practice of honesty. And it's a, it's a practice of giving yourself permission it's a practice of worthiness. It's a practice of self-love. And so you're going to start there, but let me tell you the simple thing, the simple thing every single day when you wake up, you can just ask yourself, am I for or against my dream today? Am I for or against my dream? It's really that simple. Your dreams are your responsibility. Are you for them today? Or are you against them? There's no middle ground, by the way. Because if you're neutral, you're against. You are either for that dream inside you or you're against it. So what does that mean? Well, when you're arguing against your dream, guess what? You're not for it. When you're making excuses, are you for it? No. When you are afraid of it happening or not happening, are you for it? No. Being for your dream is, first of all, being in touch with it. So simply being in touch with it and claiming it, that's a way to be for it. Another way to be for it is to see reasons why it's your dream, to see evidence that it could happen, to see everybody else out there. In my world, it was people that were launching podcasts. Instead of seeing them as reasons why my flame was out, see them as evidence that yes, my flame too is going to burn brighter, that they are lights on the path. I said earlier that it is essential when you're going through a challenging time. Your dreams matter more than ever then because if you give up on your dreams when you're feeling lost or on autopilot or you're facing heartbreak, you literally give up a lifeline that is part of your DNA. See, your dreams remind you that this challenge is temporary. Your dreams remind you that there's something greater ahead. Your dreams remind you that this moment, it's a blip. It's a dot. It's part of the path leading you somewhere that you're meant to go. Your dreams help you through challenging times. So don't give up on them. You got to double down on them if things are challenging. That's the best time to create something new. That's the best time to tap into that fire inside you. You need that fire at that time. That's why it's there. You see, I think your dreams have this incredible purpose that nobody understands. What if I told you, you're actually not supposed to achieve your dreams? Yep, you're not supposed to achieve your dreams. The reason why I can say that is because your dreams are not a destination. Your dreams are a directional signal. Your dreams are like this compass inside you, this GPS system that's hardwired in you. You were born with it. It, it, it. It's like a beacon, a lighthouse out in the future. It's pulling you through your problems towards something greater. It is showing you that there's something awesome to look forward to. It's giving you a reason to have hope, something bigger to believe in. Those dreams pull you through your fears. They make you grow. They push you through your self-doubt. That's why they're there. They show you the way. It doesn't matter whether you achieve them or not. What matters is do you hear the call? 
Do you fan the flame? Do you wake up every day and allow yourself to feel those things that are meant for you and fan the flame and be the person that is the force, the yes, the loudest voice for them? It doesn't matter what everybody else thinks. Who gives a shit what anybody else thinks, honestly? And if they haven't achieved your dreams, why the fuck are you asking their opinion anyway? They don't know how to get there. And your dreams, by the way, are not meant for somebody else. That's why they don't understand them. And here's another thing that you're doing. You are literally looking for validation from people who can't even cheer their own selves on. Like, how can somebody who's not even pursuing their dreams help or celebrate you as you're trying to pursue yours? See, this comes back to it being your responsibility. This is an inside job. And when you really wrap your brain around this, life gets freaking magical. Doesn't mean it's always like roses. Doesn't mean it's going to be easy as you walk toward those dreams. But there is nothing more fulfilling than waking up every day and knowing that you are the loudest cheerleader that you got. Knowing that you believe that this thing is possible knowing that you're the one that's for this, that you're validating the, the things that are deep inside of you. That is, that is an incredible way to go through life.